Yes, hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Dries, and I'm here presenting together with my colleague, uh, Danny. Um, before we start, I would like to give a brief introduction what we're going to be talking about during this short lightning talk. Um, we've been working in the past few months on um, uh, a digital archive platform, a repository, let's say. Um, we're going to give you a demo about it. It's an open sourced repository, so it's it's uh, freely available. It will become freely available. You, can, you will be able to access it. Um, it integrates with learning management systems, and um, it also has a great architecture and infrastructure behind it. And we do this because you want to reduce the carbon footprint of our University of Applied Sciences, because we realize that lots of bachelor papers, lots of project works are being archived in a physical way, and we really want to tackle uh, that issue. Um, just giving you a short introduction about our institution. We are Artevelde University of Applied Sciences, based in Flanders in Ghent. Uh, we have about 15,000 students, uh, 12 campuses spread all over the center of, of Ghent, about 1,400 members of staff. And as a library, as an office for library services, we have five locations, also part of uh, these campuses in the center of Ghent. We offer lots of services with a team of 21 people. And one of these services that we will be talking about is the last one in this list, namely the Institutional Digital Archive. Um, I just mentioned the fact that we are launching this digital archive to reduce our carbon, carbon footprint. We looked into the saw that in the academic year 2018-2019, uh, we had about 1,200 bachelor papers that were submitted. And uh, knowing that usually a bachelor paper is submitted in different versions, that means that we have about uh, 1,800 kilos of carbon equivalent uh, emission, basically, and we really want to tackle uh, that. So our digital archive is not only a part of our digital transformation strategy, but also a whole institute approach towards reduce reducing our carbon footprint. So the digital archive, it consists of different parts and, and Danny will give you a short demo after we finish with this slide. Um, it consists of a collection. So a collection could be all bachelor papers from uh, a specific study program, specific year, where a collection manager can add contributors, can add metadata, but students are owner of their bundle and a bundle is part of a collection. So students will be then able to add items to a certain bundle. And all of this information will be added with different metadata fields and embargoes in order to be able to share it freely with the public. But I will stop talking now and I would like to give the floor to my colleague Danny, who is uh, one of the brains behind this great product. Uh, so Danny, I will unshare my screen and give you the floor. OK, thank you, um, Dries. Do you hear me and do you see uh, my screen? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so um, this is a, a pilot homepage of uh, our archive. As you can see, we have several collections here, which are shown. Uh, um, a main feature of our project is that uh, we would like it to be very visual, so that uh, it's not uh, purely text. So every collection which is made um, will have its own reference image, which can be chosen by the collection owner itself. So you can take your own photograph or you can search for a, a right free um, photo or you can um, add some uh, copyright information on that. If you click on a collection, then you get into the collection and then you can see all the bundles which are in uh, this collection. So this is um, a collection of um, uh, bachelor um, projects of a, of a, of a, <coughs> of, um, a program and you can see all the bachelor uh, projects which are uploaded by the students. You can see um, the title, the metadata and uh, a short description of um, the bundle. If you click on a bundle, you can go a level deeper and then you can see what we call reference files. Um, reference files um, when you upload the bundle, it can contain hundred or even a few thousands uh, of files of items. So you can um, 
you can mark some of those files as being reference files and it are, are those files which will be visible to the public. The public, that is to say, um, when your collection or your bundle is um, openly uh, available. Um, it is possible to, um, and I will let you show this in a moment, it is possible to add embargoes on the collection level or on bundle levels. So if I go to the settings and you have here embargoes, you can have some explanation on it. And then you can see, okay, I'll try to switch to English. Then you can see, okay, who will, uh, who is able to see the metadata, who can see the, uh, the bundle content itself. So um, you can very, uh, you can protect your your bundles or your collections um, very easily. I'll go back to um, where I was, where I left off. Okay. Now that I'm logged in, I can, I have a button available, show the bundle items. Um, this bundle only contains one item because it's a it's just a bachelor project but some of uh, some other bundles can contain really a lot of stuff like this one for instance so here you can see the actual structure of your bundle with all its hierarchy you can drill down into um uh, into a, a folder, you can go back up and you can um, go into one file, you can say mark this file as a reference item and then it will be shown in your bundle as being a reference item uh, as you can see here. So it's all very visual, it's all very uh, aimed at being very intuitive and very user friendly. Chris, I would like you to take over because um, I don't want to spend too much time and you have something to say also. Yeah, thanks. Um, Danny, for showing us this demo. Um, something else that might be of your interest is uh, knowing a little bit more about the technology and the architect architecture behind the platform. Um, Danny? Okay, this is a very simple uh, structure of how we tackle this. So the client uh, we are using is uh, just uh, HTML JavaScript using the React uh, library. Then we have uh, connections to uh, our own uh, web server, which, um, which will manage the databases and the APIs, which in, in its turn uh, connects to our institutional database, of course, uh, to get all the programs, to get all the users uh, of our um, of our college um, and we have our own database of course. For storage we uh, we use the Azure uh, storage um, to the, 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 the current collections are stored there. When they're older than 14 months we will store them on Office 365 storage because that's cheaper for us, it's, uh, it's free. Um, and then um, there's also, of course, uh, which we, we will tackle that later on, um, the possibility to get uh, found uh, on the internet, the World Wide Web. So that will be handled on the Azure storage part uh, too. That's it's just in three words how our, our system architecture is, uh, is made. Thank you for that. I saw yes. that there's some questions in, in the chat. Um, but you can always definitely get in touch with us via our uh, email address, which is being projected now, or visit us on our website, or directly visit and have a look at the Institutional Digital Archive. Uh, the link is there as well. Thanks. Thank you. Then I can <laughs> ask one of the, the um, and questions that were still left uh, is, are you using a repository to store the, the metadata, or is it done using the databases of the framework? Um, neither of the, of, of the two. We, we don't use a repository to store the metadata. We, when metadata is changed, we, we will write the metadata down into files in our, on our own uh, server, on the storage server, which is then being uh, made available to for searches uh, worldwide on the World Wide Web. Why we build our own archive system? Uh, just because we don't, we, we are not a purely 
scientific repository um, the nature of the projects that uh, are being made in in our in our uh, college are very very uh, wide so it's not just um, uh, scientific uh, reports but also a very complex student projects with uh, which um, which uh, consist of of uh, uh, videos or audio or even websites and we we want to be able to uh, to archive those things uh, uh, also and the the uh, existing repositories we examined didn't offer um, uh, all the features that were that we wanted in the end uh, thank you i think uh, we need to move to to our next uh, speaker. Thank you for this presentation. It looks beautiful. Thank you.